Good morning. Good to be with you today as we begin our study of Genesis, the first book in the Bible written by Moses, as were the first five, the Pentateuch. And today we're going to cover uh, parts of creation. It's a great study. I'm looking forward to uh, being in it with you. So let's begin in the first verse of the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It's very interesting. This uh, formless and empty, it was barren, it was uninhabited, there was no specific uh, topographical parts of the earth. It was just a formless, empty, deserted place. And God took it and he began to work with it. In verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And this is not the sun and the stars, the heavenly sources of light that we know now. Uh, God was the source of light. Uh, the sun and stars and moon didn't come about until the fourth day of creation. So here we see God providing the light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness, the light above, the darkness below. God called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day. Now there have been uh, discussions ad infinitum about what, whether this was a 24 hour day or whether it was a longer expanse of time. I don't think it's important. It's to me, it, I don't want to go beyond what we understand as day, and for me, that's 24 hours. And so I refer to it and look at it and understand it as being a 24 hour period of time that God created the light and the darkness or he separated them for his own purpose. And this reveals the sovereignty and power of uh, God and creation. So let's jump over now to the 26th verse of this first chapter. And God said, or then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Now let me stop there kind of mid-sentence, but let us. So there is the first reference we have uh, to the Trinity. Uh, it is more than one. We assume Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Trinity. And God is personally involved here. It is not as it says in the twenty. Fourth verse, and God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind. Uh, that was kind of on their own, do their own thing and produce according to their kind. But here God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. It would be as if we were to take a picture of something, or we would see an image from a mirror. It is an image of something. It is a, a copy, not a complete copy, but an image of something. And so we are created, man is created in the image or in the likeness of God. 
and that has a huge impact on how we conduct ourselves being in the image and likeness of God as followers of Jesus that calls upon us to be responsible in a certain way. And then beginning after that, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So not only were we made in the image of God and the likeness of God and the Son, but we were given responsibilities to be caretakers of God's earth and to rule over the creatures uh, that he had made, to take care of the livestock, to take care of the ground for all things God created. Moving on to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. The Mago Day. And Max Licato said, You weren't an accident. You weren't mass produced. You aren't an assembly line product. You were deliberately planned, specifically gifted, and lovingly positioned on this created earth. So this was not an accident. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The two sexes, and only two, male and female. This is the crowning point. This is the, the ultimate creation of God, and this was his crowning touch. He created man in his own image. In verse 28, it says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. So he gave them the power necessary for success. He gave them the responsibility of multiplying, of being fruitful, of, of filling the earth and subduing it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now this rule is not a dictatorial type of a rule. It's not a, a physical submission of the creatures. It is not harsh, but it is in the image and likeness of God, in the image and likeness of his character, not his physical appearance, not uh, with all of his characteristics, but a likeness, an image. Of God, And so when we rule and when we subdue, when we multiply, we are to do it as God would do it. As a believer in Christ, we are to rule with God-like love and character in his image. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. So we see here that God has created initially a finished product. The trees will have fruit, uh, they will be yours for food. So it is an immediate harvest that God provided for man. 
and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. So the life on earth that God had created, he immediately planned food. There were no seeds planted. There, were no, there was no harvesting. There was no plowing the ground. Uh, there was no trimming. It was a completed creation. God had created food for all living creatures. But it is interesting to note that I give every plant for food, and it was so. So the animals on earth, the creatures on earth, as well as humans, were initially vegetarian. Uh, meat eating did not come to being uh, until the fall of man. When man sinned, uh, that was kind of a turning point where they would eat meat. I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And then in verse 31, God saw that all that he had made, and it was very good, his omnipotence, his omnipresence allowed him to see everything, all that he made, and it was very good. Uh, not just good, but it was very good. The Gnostics believed that, that the physical was bad, the spiritual was good, but God said all that he created from mosquitoes to man was good. God saw that all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And again, I don't want to, to interpret anything that is not said and I believe that that sixth day was the sixth 24-hour day that God had created all that he created. I don't think any more was necessary. Uh, God is omnipotent. He can do whatever he needs to do in 24 hours or 24 years. And then chapter 2 which focuses more on the creation of humanity. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And we believe as Christians that the seventh day is a day of rest. God made it holy. It says in the third verse, and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God was not tired, of course. Uh, he knew that man would be tired after working six days if his work week was that long. And so God blessed that seventh day and called it holy and told men to rest on that seventh day. What a great story. What a blessing that all of this glorious creation that we enjoy each day gifted to us by God. We were created, created specifically. 
gifted in a certain way that we might serve him, worship him, and rest in him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the beautiful day that you've given us for this beginning chapter in the book of Genesis that, that Moses wrote by your direction to tell us what happened on that very first week when you created what we see today. Uh, Father, we are grateful. We are thankful for your word and for your son, Jesus. Uh, Father, we recognize that we were created in your image and your likeness, and we just pray, Father, that you would strengthen us with the re resolve to conduct ourselves as we are in your, your likeness, that, that people would see in us the image of God, imago dia, the image of God, the likeness of God. We pray, Father, for our church and those that lead it in our community. We pray for those that need your touch to heal physically, spiritually, in family. Uh, Father, we praise you. And we are thankful that you hear our prayers and that you will answer it. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.